Why don't you give me a sign? This is Corinna Jane. That leaves a trail along that shore. It's not your problem, it's mine. With her brand new single, Give Me a Sign. As featured on BBC Introducing. It's just the way it's gotta be. Corinna Jane, give me a sign. Out now. That sausage times two. Too many men, too many men, too many men. This is the mango chutney, like, area. You're calling me out in my fucking bar, mate. Relationships are about compromise. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the fan carpet. Okay, so... Uh, it's wonderful to to see you both. Um, I'm enjoying the series so far. I haven't finished watching it, but I'm enjoying it. Um, so if we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you both to get into the entertainment industry? Um, well, for me, I mean, I've been acting for quite a long time. So I'm an actress and then I got into comedy a little bit later. Um, so I've always enjoyed like performing and entertaining and like doing stuff with my family. So it's kind of always been there. And then comedy basically just came a bit later. So I'd been acting for a while. I wasn't really getting many parts. And I knew I wanted to do like an acting role in comedy. So I thought, oh, well, how can I kind of get to that? So I thought, oh, I'll try a bit of stand-up comedy. I'll make a few sketches. And then through doing that, that's how I started networking with, with Kat. And um, yeah, it's kind of it's taken me to lots of good places, which is good. Awesome. Um, for me, yeah, I think just growing up, I was always acting, I was always involved in musicals and stuff, so I always wanted to do it, I just didn't know if I was going to get the chance to, um, being from North, you know, and yeah, when I went to drama school, well, I got dropped by my agent, so that kind of set me off on a, you know, doing my own thing, making my own stuff, doing like open mic things, spoken word poetry. I just kind of threw myself at everything because, you know, I didn't really have any other outlet apart from like posting stuff on Instagram. So then the sketches started and then met Kat and then Bob's your uncle, Fanny Duran. <laughs> cool. That's great. All right. So what was it about lads that made you want to create it? So we were both in a lockdown. So we came up with the idea in the last lockdown um, and we were both just a bit bored. We weren't really doing anything. I wasn't even seeing Kat, to be honest, because, you know, we couldn't get to each other. And we kind of said, OK, well, we want to we want to make something not I mean, originally we were doing like one minute sketches, short form stuff. Mm. So we thought, OK, we want to make something a bit more like long form. And then we just started voice noting back and forth on WhatsApp, bantering with each other. And then we kind of just came up with this idea of lads and then. Kat originally in one of our other sketches she had this character called Dave who appeared in our female comedian sketch he was this yeah. guy that just didn't really get female comedians and didn't, didn't and, like it and yeah didn't thought like women it. like didn't understand why women were doing things he was like what was she doing up there and <laughs> it became like a bit of an iconic line and and then, yeah, it just became, well, it's kind of an archetypal character that I do, like a typical boy thing, but then it became a fully formed character. And then Kat came up with Charlie. And then I think the whole reason it actually became a thing was firstly because everyone on Instagram loved it so much, but also like the amount of ideas we got. I don't think we've ever had this many ideas for characters. Like it could go on It was forever. literally because we're it was coming literally off. one idea after it's the like, other. Yeah, it was constant. Mm -hmm. And it and we love the characters. We love playing them. We have so much fun doing it. So to me, it was the most obvious thing to make into a, a longer thing because we actually like had the most material. People were getting it and we were loving it. So mm -hmm. mm, definitely. Yeah, we just had, I mean, we had so many ideas. Like me and Kat were literally voice noting back and forth forth back and forth for like an hour like with so much content so yeah it just made and sense we, for us we we're had, always we had fun. We had fun doing it as well yeah we're mm, always yeah. in hysterics like 
you you obviously see like loads of stuff cut out but we actually improvise for like 20 minutes at a time and some of the takes are really long but and sometimes I'll say something and Kat will just like burst into laughter and then we'll just like pick it up so yeah we have a lot of fun okay. mm. yeah because that, that's actually one of my one of my questions because you both wrote wrote lads so so that was there room for ad-libbing well no it's completely, so completely improvised. improvised yeah so we didn't actually I don't think I've ever actually when I've worked with Kat actually sat down and written no. a script like it's not really how we work we just we come up with an idea and then we we have like a a, a basic synopsis I'd say like ideas of what we want to improvise yeah. around and, and then, some iconic line ideas yeah. like sometimes like the 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 bum but the bum bag stuff that isn't in the it's not in the final edit but it was in the five minute sketches we came up with that's why you wear a bum bag and that like sometimes it's just an iconic line we want to say and mm. then the improvisation comes around that one scenario but yeah, yeah anything anything can come out I mean Mm, I, mean, I, uh, I remember meeting up with Kat in the summer when we decided to do like a full length series and we literally sat at a, like at a bar in London like outside I remember and we were just writing down ideas on our phone like okay oh, yeah. we, want to, we want to do an episode where Charlie gets a job we want to do an episode yeah, we were, where uh, yes, yeah we were trying to think ideas. of like what each episode would be about and mm. like some some scenes that would take place like Charlie gets a job at cost cutter and you know little simple ideas but we didn't actually know what we were going to actually do in cost cutter that's all completely improvised yeah so it's yeah, really it's fun I think it's a really freeing thing that we got to do as well like we just you know when you're bantering back and forth with someone you end up actually coming out with some really funny stuff yeah. like so much random like a bit wacky but it just works and I feel like that's kind of the beauty of it really is that it can be really wacky but we make it work because we really believe in it and mm. yeah I think you hopefully you can see that anyway when you watch it <laughs> yeah it's fun uh yeah it's it's fun um so do you have any moments from filming that stick with you throughout your careers um from filming lads or just mm. filming yeah in just filming lads yeah yeah I mean there's so many funny moments like I think I think the, the driving yeah. I mean you it, it's episode four mm -hmm. uh which you haven't well actually no, you I said have you seen just it. got to it yeah, just yeah so episode it. four when we're driving I think that was just a what the hell are we doing moment I was like we are crazy doing this because <laughs> we obviously went to McDonald's in character that was I think a defining day for us that we pulled mm. that off like the getting the car the going like it there was a lot of moving parts to that and we'd obviously we had no outside help we were literally doing this just ourselves so that was a bit of an eye-opening day yeah and um yeah where I thought oh we can actually do this we're actually getting away with this like this this is going to be good yeah it was quite a, I mean I thought it was it was quite a crazy moment as well like when you're you're sitting in a car and you're wearing this ridiculous boy wig <laughs> and you're ordering a McDonald's like and it, the fact that we were doing it and people were actually taking us seriously as yeah, well yeah they, they <laughs> completely took us seriously they did not react to it at all yeah it, um, it did kind of feel like we were filming some sort of prank show or I don't know like, <laughs> yeah, like all did. that kind of style-esque like yeah. that sort of thing where it's all like live and in the moment but no it was so much fun like yeah I, I would do that again if I got the opportunity I would yeah don't do that again well, we're doing a series too 100 percent. I'm not taking yeah. no for an answer so definitely <laughs> so so the like so McDonald's and Costco they weren't they they had no idea what was going on no, so, the cost cutter did. Yeah. We okay. like obviously arranged that um, and had permission from from them. But McDonald's, yeah, they just went along with us as if we were just normal customers. So, but but in the cost cutter, there are real customers in there. 
they are still working we're just in the shop so the the customers aren't aware of who we are but obviously the the management are mm -hmm. but, so that was pretty Quite funny lovely. as well cost cut a day there wasn't really anyone in there anyway so it wasn't like you know it wasn't that busy or anything like that and it was just quite funny as well the fact that I, got, I ended up getting this like apron and like <laughs> with like a name badge it was just so funny like pretending I had a job at cost cutter and oh it's just yeah ridiculous but just really funny yeah yeah that's cool well I'm glad it, it, it wouldn't have worked if they didn't if like everyone didn't just react the way they did yeah, yeah definitely yeah cool um so um do you like being able to challenge yourselves and go outside of your comfort zones yeah I think for me actually lads was a massive challenge just because I think a couple of years ago I don't think I would ever have done something like this or played yeah. a boy just because I don't know I'd be a bit too self-conscious I think about it like oh are people gonna think I look really weird like I don't know just like normal insecurities that you have as a woman so this was yeah. actually a challenge for me to actually like be a boy strip away everything that I love like I love you know having my makeup done and thinking like hair extensions and shit like that like mm. taking that all away and just being a boy like yeah, yeah so freeing and, and fun and yeah like love it mm. I've well I've actually played a boy before yeah you've, like, you've done a few times yeah I've done like yeah quite a few times in my life I've had to play a boy I've had to play Joseph before because I was the only girl I could I could sing and none of the boys could so I was him mm. so that was very young and then I did another like play where the girl cross dresses to f find out what her husband's doing so it's kind of happened and I would play all the boy parts in like our sketches and I did Love Island impressions and stuff so I've kind of always dipped my toe in that pond I find it really funny mm. and um yeah especially playing with someone else and getting in our little bubble that was mm. to be honest yeah, really freeing actually working with Kat and seeing her like kind of taking on the boy roles and stuff quite a lot actually made me more open to wanting to do it as well like at first I was a bit like oh is that is that gonna work kind of thing but then because yeah. I saw how much fun she was having with it I was like oh my god I want to do that I want to be a boy oh so yeah and like, then you did and then you worked. played a boy in mm. Poe actually our, yeah. our little Christmas sketch mm. and that was the first time you played a boy and maybe you realized then that you actually can yeah um, Really and that you can be it. funny with it. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, obviously, in the first episode, you did the chicken challenge. Uh, was that inspired by the popular the YouTube series, What Hot Ones? No. Yeah. no. Was it? Or was um, it for you? No, it was but... just in general, general chicken wings challenges that, you know, where these guys are, like, crying um but trying to sort of prove that they can handle it and stuff it was just generally silly little challenges that we could do mm. um just to and be that fair, chicken wings challenge one yeah I've yeah. seen a lot on like YouTube of guys doing like drinking t like challenges and stuff like that and we sort of like we thought about that we were like oh maybe they could do a drinking challenge and then Kat was like oh no it'd be funnier if they did like a hot wings challenge and I was like oh yeah and then like yeah we had that this was one idea. of our first ideas yeah we had the idea of challenges but we weren't sure what it was going to be and then Kat came up with the idea of the chicken wing thing so we sort of yeah had that initial thing and I, I had seen a lot on YouTube as well of like guys doing drinking I don't know being stupid mm. messing about okay if you haven't seen Hot Ones, it's very good. It's, oh, it's yeah. quite funny. <laughs> it's very uh, funny. Um, okay, I'll have a look. They, say, they basically do an interview while they're eating hot wings. Uh, <laughs> that sounds good. I want to do that. that. And they have like they had different. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but they had different sauces that have the different oh, yeah, um, like... hotness levels. Um, and it's good. It's funny. Um, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. It's funny. 
Um, so um, how did you find working with uh, Alexandra uh, Milne on the music? So me. It wasn't so much me, it was more Kat, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's me. Mm. Well, um, that song actually existed before Lads. It's it's actually been used in another project that me and Alex, because we've been working together for like years. Um, and she first worked with me on a short film that I did. And this, the song was actually made for that. But, you know, we didn't have a theme song and nothing was really working for us. We didn't, you know, we wanted it to be like quite iconic and like true to the style of the show. Um, so then we, we asked, well, I asked uh, Alex to come up with something a bit more laddie, like, you know, whistling, dog, not, you know, all of that sort of stuff, like a bit more urban sounding. Mm -hmm. And she came up with what she came up with and it sounds great. It's got less vocals in it. Obviously the full song is different. So Alex just does a good job on whatever the hell she does. She just knows, so it was pretty easy. Yeah, it really like elevated the series as well. Yeah. Like and people are like singing mm. it by the end they're like blah, blah, blah. yeah it's just iconic and I think it really works with what we've done so yeah it was a really strong a strong move I think anyway yeah I love that mm. awesome um so how um so Kat how did you find uh juggling acting and directing um I think like it's just what we naturally do anyway like Kat organizes things and talks to people that you know is more of a producer role and I'm more like oversee the like image of it and we obviously talk and stuff but you know the camera shots and things like that it, it just kind of comes naturally because it's what we do anyway because yeah when we're filming our sketches there isn't anyone here so I usually take on that role anyway so it's just kind of natural yeah just how we, we work <laughs> we just sort of like naturally go, yeah go into those roles really it, yeah. we never like sit and discuss and say right you're going to be the director I'm yeah. going to be the we never never do that it's literally just natural like we, yeah and we it just works yeah brilliant um so are there any genres that you guys haven't done yet that you'd like to or is comedy where you want to stay um I Sorry, um, I I always want to do serious roles as well. Um, I'd love to do. I love like films like Adulthood and Ill Manners and stuff. I'd like to do something quite you know serious and. Um, yeah, I would love to do that. I'm sure it'll come, but at the moment, comedy is like popping. We're enjoying our stuff, so yeah. Yeah, I think as a duo, obviously more comedy stuff. Yeah. But if oh, the yeah, definitely. Be... arose where someone said, Oh, I have a series and I want you and Kat to, to be in it, and it's a really serious, dark drama. Oh my God, that. we'd love it. That'd be amazing. I'd love that because we are actors like, yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. So if the opportunity arise, arises, then who knows? But um, yeah, I think comedy is kind of where we're. Where we're both at, anyway. Where we're at. Mm. And when, when things open back up properly, um, it'll be good to see you both back in stand-up. Yes, definitely. We um, actually have a show coming up. Yes. Um, so oh, it's yeah? called The Whoring Twenties. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be on at Museum of Comedy on the 26th and 27th, 27th of August. And then we've got a few other kind of dates in the pipeline for it as well but yeah it's yeah. sketch it's kind of everything that we do it's going to be so fun and girly it's going to be really girly and fun yeah. and it's spectacular and just different different from what we've done with lads like it's going to be something I'm excited for it just to do something different as well so yeah, yeah it's going to be really fun awesome so yeah it'll be good to get back up on the stage doing like just classic stand-up Mm. yeah definitely well yeah that's that's when you and i met kat so um yes yeah, um, stand-up shows yeah uh it was the um what was the name Kensington. Of it? yeah what was the name of it i can't it south remember south comedy club 
No, it was the um, uh, Laura was running it. Laura Thomas. Yeah. Oh, Sex Standing Up. Sex that's standing the one, up. yeah. That's, that's it, the one. that's it. Yes, Sex Standing Up. That was a really good night. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, you did come to that, I remember. Yeah. I God, that seems one. ages ago. That was when I, like, first started. Yeah, it has been, yeah, it's been a while. Well, I haven't seen you for a while because of yeah, what's been going on. Fun. So, um, yeah. Uh, so obviously in these unprecedented times we kind of touched on it a little bit but um, what are you looking forward to getting back to when it's safer to do so? Um, I mean I'm definitely looking forward to doing some like live performance just because I have really mm. missed it like I love doing theatre I love being on stage I mean I just think it's it's so freeing and fun for me so I am really excited to get back into that and just normal things as well like socialising seeing friends <laughs> um having a drink somewhere nice mm. rooftop bar somewhere would be nice <laughs> yeah but, some um, change of scenery yeah, i'm sick of, of this mm, definitely like yeah it does i get want a drink i want yeah. i want to see some views like some different views not just this view i want nando's in the restaurant <laughs> that's what I want with all my sources and everything we actually um, we had Nando's on our, on our launch day and it was it was pretty good I mean it was nice amazing but I want it in the restaurant as well yeah. and yeah just yeah live performance like the gig having the socialize um and seeing other people perform as well it's just you know vibes Absolutely. So, um, Kat, you've obviously got Rise of the Foot Soldier or yeah. Origins in post. Uh, what was that experience like? Yeah, it was really fun. Um, we're in the 80s, isn't it? So I absolutely loved the look and my hair and everything. And it was freezing, though, because um, I'm in a very little dress and it was winter when we were filming it. But yeah, it was it was great. The team's great, and um, it's obviously an iconic film franchise. So I'm very happy to be a part of it, and I'm excited to see it because I've barely I've barely seen any of the shots that I'm even in. So I don't even know. I haven't seen anything basically, so it'll be a surprise for me. Oh, that's cool. I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's always nice to be surprised. Um, who inspires you in the industry? I mean, like for com comedy wise, like I absolutely love Catherine Ryan. I think she's amazing. If I could have that kind of career and mm. have my own like comedy series on Netflix, like that would be the dream to, to be able to do that. So she really does. And then I love like London Hughes as well. I think her career is just like massively blown up. Like she was doing yeah. a show in Edinburgh. And now she's in America, filmed a Netflix series, literally living the LA dream. Like that would be my goal. Yeah. If I got into a, an American sitcom and I was filming at Universal Studios, like, oh my God, it's like, that would be, <laughs> be <sick. laughs> I would die. So um, yeah, I would say they massively inspire me, like comedy wise, definitely. Um, I, don't, I, I honestly don't, I don't know, but I love, um, trailer park boys and i love it's always sunny in philadelphia and they have like kind of a sim similar like story to us that they filmed it themselves like weird pilots it's a and then they've like taken it into their own hands and they have all these wacky ideas and they're a massive inspiration for me because of just how they've done it and and just how free they are with all of the the topics that they cover they they just do everything and they they're just such weird um episodes and the characters are so strange and chaotic so they're like massive inspirations to me awesome um now with the popularity of streaming services like netflix so uh, what do you think the future of cinema is i mean it's hard because well, you know mm. what? I think because we've all been in a lockdown, I think people are actually really excited to go to the cinema and actually yeah. get from sitting at home. And because I mean, it is nice to we've sit been at home able to do that. But... Yeah, 
be wrong it's nice to sit at home and watch Netflix but I think people are actually excited to get yeah. into a bar. like I really want to see the new um what's it, it's the new Cruella de Vil film I think that oh, that's gonna be amazing, amazing. Thing. and like the new bond as well i think people are going to go crazy over that when it's when it releases we, we haven't been able to do anything so mm. actually it could it could well i hope it does bring a surge but that yeah. does make sense i think it will mm, yeah definitely great yeah. uh, and what are you hoping audience will take away from lads when they get to see it just a bit, um, a bit yeah. of fun, like, I hope they're uplifted, I hope they had a giggle, I hope they, you know, take things a little less seriously, I think everything has just been so heavy, and everything is really tense at the moment, and angry, and yeah, it's just like, to lighten up, it's just fun, hope people think it's fresh and different, and something that they've never seen before, because yeah yeah I agree I mean just take away a little bit of happiness in this in this dark time I mean yeah. lads is just really silly and you know a lot of it doesn't really make any sense a lot of the time it's just fun <laughs> silly humor and I think that's yeah. what we need right now um yeah so I hope people um take that away from it hmm Great. Um, uh, you mentioned that, season, that you're doing a season two no matter what, uh, but what does the future <laughs> hold for lads? I mean, I mean, the ideas are actually like endless. We have, I mean, we wanted to do like lads going abroad, like film something away on holiday. I think it would be yeah. amazing if we got the yeah. opportunity. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have endless ideas for it. I mean, we've already got a list of, of stuff we yeah. want to through so definitely yeah got definitely got a few left in us but yeah I want it we want it to be done in a way where we don't have to be doing absolutely everything because it's very stressful and we'd love to just focus on the like the writing and the creating rather than you know all of the admin and the stressful stuff mm. but yeah it's going to happen mm, definitely yeah yeah, because at the moment it's it's a three person crew, isn't it? Yeah, pretty well, much. Like you yeah, have four or five, like at different stages, but pretty much like three people. Yeah. Yeah, you two and Luke, and yeah, the majority. and then other yeah. people at later stages. But yeah, cool. it'd be nice to get some yeah people like actually holding sound things and stuff. That'd be great. Yeah, we don't ask for much. To be fair, the, <laughs> the actual filming, like the actual acting and filming of it, didn't actually take that long it's at all. The really, the least it stressful so, part. It was the least stressful bit. It's been all the admin and the editing and the mm. emailing back and forth. Like that's that's been the hard part. The actual. I mean, I still want to be involved in the edit and stuff. We'd still want to do that, but yeah. just not like literally solely responsible for everything and. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, awesome. Looking forward to that. Um, so just so before before just before you go, uh, where can people find you on social media to keep up with you and your stand up and lads? Yes. Um, Instagram. Oh yeah. <laughs> Instagram no. Twitter for me is at Kat Ronnie, K-A-T-R-O-N-N-Y. And if you want to check out lads, it's Vimeo.com. <laughs> forward slash on demand forward slash lads and you can watch the series yeah. there for so £1 pound to rent three pounds to buy yes yeah, so for me um instagram and twitter is at miss katarina r all my stuff's there and then yeah stay, same as cat if you want to watch the series Vimeo on demand and yeah we hope people enjoy it and yeah. um, feedback and stuff we're getting so far What's the what's the reception been like so far? Really People nice. People have been messaging yeah. saying they love it, yeah, and that they're really enjoying it. And mm -hmm. lots of guys love it. They they're saying that we really capture like the laddie, you know, masculinity challenges and stuff really well. And yeah, girls love it as well. It's just a. I think it's something that everyone can enjoy and relate to. Like everyone's been a teenager. Everyone <laughs> knows teenage boys. Like. You know, 
yeah definitely so it's, no we've been getting really nice response so yeah. far it's nice it's nice hearing feedback it's been such a long time coming like you know putting make it sure all you give us a review mark won't you yeah it yeah. Be going up the weekend. It. yeah it's gonna be it's, it'll be going up at the weekend <laughs> Woo! yeah uh, yeah no yeah. worries um all right cool well um yeah, good luck with everything, and I hope I hope you get your season two because uh, oh. I'd like to see what happens next. Yeah, <laughs> Thank so you. let me know what the cliff, what you think of the cliffhanger, what you think, because uh, you you need to watch the, uh, episode five, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I haven't seen episode five and six. I've got cool. left. So yeah. yeah. Six is like a documentary about like how we made the series and stuff. So. Okay. Um, yeah. So five is the final episode, but it's intense. So see what you think. Cool. It's great. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and thank you for taking your time today uh, to speak to me. Uh, this no problem. Cool. Nice this to see you again. again. Pleasure is all ours. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thanks very much. Take care. See you. Bye bye. 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 Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. What do you mean you got a job? So like, Dave has brought us here to this unknown location. Uh, People are under this. What's your shoes at? No, what's your shoes at? Don't fucking talk about my mum. You bought some fucking Derry Dunkers and everything. Don't get this bit. I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you around Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.